Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Buddhang saranam gachami. Danang saranam gachami, sanghang saranam gachami, dutiampi budang saranam gachami, dutiampi danang saranam gachami, dutiampi sanghang saranam gachami, tatiampi budang saranam gachami, tatiampi. Danang saranam gachami, tatiampi sangang saranam gachami. The Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, paying homage as we come together. Acknowledging our various backgrounds and ethnic, cultural, religious backgrounds, gender preferences. sexual orienta orientation, ages, abilities, spending this time meditating, and acknowledging the indigenous peoples whose ancestral lands we are seated on. For me, it's the Multnomah and the Cowlitz, the Salets, the confederated tribes of the Grand Ronde. Recognizing that wherever we are seated, that there is a community of many diverse Native people who continue to live and work here and that we respectfully acknowledge and honor all Indigenous communities, past, present, and future, and grateful for their ongoing, vibrant presence. Taking this time to reacquaint ourselves at the end of the day to our bodies in this position, bringing the heart and the mind together at this place where we sit. Gravity, feeling the sensations of our feet on the floor and our buttocks on the cushion. What does it feel like?
Can we feel sensations? Where we're, where our body is pressing against the chair, our buttocks or our feet. Not just telling ourselves that it's hard or soft or warm or cool or tingly, but really being with the feeling, being present and noticing the changing nature of the feeling of touch at whatever place we're noticing it. And what about the other sense doors? Is there a sound arriving to the ear? Without identifying what it is and having a perception about it or a judgment about it as whether we like it or not. We can just let it be sound coming to the ear door. We also have the sense of smell door. We also may notice coolness or warmth as the breath goes in and out at the nostrils. Or we may notice smells arriving at the nose. There may be lingering taste. What comes and goes from the taste door. Seeing if our eyes are closed, there might be internal vision happening if we let our eyes be slightly open to let light in, there may be blurred vision of shapes, but not acknowledging or defining the shapes. Just seeing is happening. And we have thought, thought happening. The Buddha used the thought door. Seeing that all of our experience comes to us, is created at these sense doors for us. Each of us perceive things differently at the different sense doors. But the purity of just sound at the ear door or whatever touch is happening at a touch point. This is the purity of the practice without grasping or clinging or pushing away or analyzing 
what's happening at those doors. So we let mindfulness be at the fore, to be present with whatever happens at any of the sense doors. And if that's a little too busyness producing, we can narrow our attention to the breath at the nostrils or the breath at the belly. We can open out to the senses a little bit later. We can stay present with just the breath, a single object to help us settle the body and settle the mind. So whichever way we choose to have mindfulness be present, whether it's a single object of the breath or changing objects that arise at each of the sense doors, we are attending to continuity of mindfulness from moment to moment. We may notice other things happening, the mind wandering, difficult to stay on a single object. There may be sleepiness. There may be pushing away something that's unpleasant that we're noticing. I'm noticing how cold my nose is and my ankles. And at first I was just noticing cold. Then I was noticing the underlying mind state that was disgruntled, wanted to do something about it. And then leaning toward opening to what's happening and investigation it brings curiosity, it br brings interest. This is the way it feels. And actually noticing the feeling sensation and how it changes. So 
So anytime we might notice discomfort in the heart and mind, we can let mindful investigation, we can let awareness, when awareness is there, we're present to what's actually happening. And we can develop that sense of dispassion without attaching to this simple thing that's happening in the body. It's just repetitious training of the heart and mind to begin again and see things clearly, notice when we might be grasping or clinging or pushing away. And we just use these moments while we're in formal practice as a way to remind us of one thing at a time coming into the senses or one breath at a time with the anchor within the body. This body breathing. Present, alert, interested, training, taming, returning again to the present moment without judgment. With kindness. We can remind ourselves to come back to the present moment. What is happening right now? What is happening in the body? What is happening in the mind? What's the attitude in the mind? Is it pleasant or unpleasant or neutral? Can we keep an interest in it for longer than 30 or 60 seconds?
beginning again. At the breath, nostrils or belly, at the sense doors, or having a spacious open awareness, noticing the breathing throughout the entire body. And being aware of what comes to any of the sense doors. One object to notice at a time. Waking up moment after moment, present, seeing clearly the impermanent nature of each conditioned thing that arises noticing it when it passes away. Being able to notice skillful mind thought, not mind thoughts, thoughts in the mind. When does joy arise? Do we notice that joy can arise when we are present for this moment, no matter what it is? We're habituated to be hard on ourselves when we start again or not congratulate ourselves for seeing something joyful in the moment, and yet the subtle joy that arises each moment that we wake up again and again, seeing the three characteristics of greed, hatred, and delusion, noticing when greed is arising, noticing when ill will is arising, noticing when confusion and delusion arise. And even upon noticing those brings joy. We're inclining the mind toward the skillful by acknowledging mindful awareness. Concentration that gets developed. Noticing mindfulness. being with and noticing the energy that it takes to be present.
letting go of thoughts that might arise that are unskillful, don't seem to be helpful for our practice, repetitive themes, and inclining the heart and mind toward recollection of the Dharma, whatever we might remember. The simple recollection of the triple gem, the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha, the understanding that awakening is possible in this lifetime. Recollection can bring up concepts and dwelling on it steadily and repeatedly until it touches the heart, the citta. And then there's this felt sense that's established that can steady, can rein in or gladden the heart. And recollecting on the triple gem, it goes deeper than thinking. You can think about anything without reflecting on how the heart has been affected. And we can forget to think deeply about what would serve us best, like attuning to integrity. So when we have the five precepts, we can make it a daily practice of checking in with harmlessness, doing no harm, honesty, reliability and clarity. And what heart tones they give rise to. Maybe we waver from these, but with recollection, we repeatedly bring them to mind. We gain their meaning and settle into that. We can review our actions from there, our attitude toward other people, other creatures. Am I living with an attitude of respect toward the world I inhabit? Can we bring forth bright karma or at least turn away from dark karma, turning away from what's not helpful and turning toward the Dhamma.
breath by breath, moment by moment. Kindness to ourselves, compassion for ourselves and others. Mindfulness is present, awareness is here, wisdom arises to incline the heart and mind toward non-harming. Being gentle in speech. not misusing substances that might cloud the mind, being careful to harm no one in our sexuality, to not take what isn't given to us. The five precepts are a way of living a way of being empty of worrying, having stability. We just proceed steadily. We don't stop, whether it's in formal sitting practice or in daily life. Lifting, moving, placing, reaching, touching, smelling, hearing, seeing, thinking. As Andrew Alinsky said in a tricycle article, the tragedy is that nothing actually exists. It's all passing away the instant it forms. The beauty is that we have the means to be aware of this, a moment to know the profound poignancy of this tiny corner of reality. And so we inspire ourselves to continue to be present, to wake up in this moment.
And if we really pay attention to what happens at each of the sense doors, being present in this moment, we're building continuity of awareness, moment to moment mindfulness. Sometimes when we follow our thoughts, we might be surprised at how many of them don't belong to us. How many have threads to ancestors and relatives and strangers and even plants and elements and animals. This interconnectedness without grasping and clinging, just noticing what's flowing past. We might notice as we're sitting that whatever comes into the sense doors sometimes might be surprising. How many of our thoughts don't seem to belong to us? How many of our thoughts have threads to ancestors relatives, strangers, even plants, elements, and animals. I like this quote by Joy Hario from Poet Warrior. Our physical living is held together by plant sacrifice. We eat, wear, and are sheltered by plants and plant material. Nearly all of our medicines are plant-derived. We need to take time with them, get to know them. It's as one of the elders from a nearby Pueblo told me once when she came to visit, she admired the two aloe vera plants who took up a large part of the living room as they basked in the sunlight filtered through the skylight. They loved her attention. These are the knowledge bearers they are the ones we need to be listening to. Not your computer, your internet that's pulling you into a world that will never feed you, only make you hungrier, she told me. That's from Poet Warrior, a memoir by Joy Hario. So again and again, we begin again. Holding ourselves in gentleness. All part of nature. We carry the hearts of and minds of ancient ones of many traditions across time and continents, while also connecting to the resources that surround us. Letting kindness be our guide, letting compassion be our guide. holding ourselves and others around us in kindness, in compassion, in joy, in equanimity.
letting a kind of spaciousness fill us as we breathe. as we bring to mind others in our family, in our community. Whatever being may come to mind to hold in kindness and in goodwill. We all want to have ease in our lives. May we hold each other with ease and kindness even those that might be difficult, however we can touch a little on, knowing that just as I wish to be happy, you also wish to be happy. Holding the heart open, even when things are challenging and difficult. Holding the heart open when things are joyous. Knowing that all beings wish to be free from harm, safe and protected, have ease. Those beings that swim and crawl and fly, walk, above and below the earth and the water's surfaces. Some of those creepy crawly things we might not like. We send them kindness. We hold them in our hearts that all beings everywhere may be free from harm, safe and protected have ease and well-being. Anicca vata sankara upadavaya domino upakita va maruchanti te sam vapasamo sukho All conditioned things arise and pass away. Seeing this clearly with mindfulness brings the greatest happiness, which is peace. you for your practice. May it be of great benefit to you and all beings. Brings me great joy.